good morning. I'm going to give you guys uh, a little tour of what I've been busy in the background with on the homestead. It's just a chat. Stay tuned. folks, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm Jerry Hansen. Uh, this is my little homestead tucked in the, up in the Cascade Ranges of the Pacific Northwest. It's keeping me busy. Uh, of course, with a farm, a homestead, there's always something to do. There's things breaking down, there's things decaying, so there's a lot going on. And that's what we're going to talk about is just basically, this is the very tail end of winter. Very tail end of winter. Today, is daylight savings time, but spring is not for a whole nother week. So let's get started and let's start in the garden. I'll show you guys my end of winter garden. Yep, this is my end of winter garden. I, I took care of all the weeds. I, I, I found a real easy way to get rid of weeds. I just take a blow torch that hooks up to, to a, a propane bottle and I just torch all the weeds. Yep. They're gone, they turn to ash, and ash is probably good for the garden too. But now, I just have to pull the uh, soil back and lay in turds from the bunny bungalow. I've been cleaning up the bunny house all year. And I'll lay that underneath and put the soil back over the top of it. And then we can uh, start our planting uh, this week. There's some plants you can put into the ground before your last frost, yep. Carrots is one of them. Radishes, lettuce, uh, kale, beetroot. There's a whole list of them and I'll be planting all of them. I do have some started in the greenhouse and also onions. I've got onions already set out here uh, that I've started. This is the uh, second year onions that I started from seed and I have third year onions in the greenhouse and I'm also starting new seed of onions in the greenhouse. Now the weeds were really easy to take care of this year, man, because I went through a couple of years of just heavily mulching using black visqueen uh, plastic on the ground, which retains moisture and helps the soil underneath. And it's a form of uh, uh, ground cover or mulch. Then I top that well with wood shavings. And so the wood shavings, it just keeps it from overheating and decaying under the sunlight because it protects it from the damaging UV rays. So also it, it decomposes and turns into a nice mulch, but later I can move this into the garden and use it as a mulch on top of my plant beds. Because in the garden, I plan on building paths and we're gonna go ahead and just lay cement bags out, spread the cement, wet it down, let it dry. And then I'll create a seal to keep the weeds down, but with my efforts at keeping weeds away, boom, no weeds, very few weeds. What I did have to burn off with a torch was the old tomato plants that grew up and they just, I just let them set all year and then I just torched them and they just went like that, really easy. So now let's take a peek inside of the greenhouse. I gotta warn you, I am a bit eccentric and I'm not ashamed of it, let's go in. I have been busy in this greenhouse for uh, several weeks. I've been planting, I've been repairing, I've been just farting around, mainly farting. I got four fruit trees uh, earlier last year and I just haven't decided where I'm going to plant them yet because they have to be in an area where they're safe from deer. We had, they were sitting out in the garden for a while and we had a long stretch of really beautiful warm temperature. They started budding and then we started getting into really bad cold freezing weather. I didn't want to lose the trees so I went ahead and brought them in the greenhouse. Thank goodness they're still in the pots. But next year when I plant them, when we have another uh, fall summer like that or fall spring like that in the winter, I'm going to have to get some tents of uh, plastic to drape over them to protect the buds. But since they're portable, I have them in here. We've got an apple tree, a pear tree, a plum tree, and a peach tree in here. And all oh, the blooms are beautiful. 
I've also been working out here. Um, I got my little home repair kit. I've been repairing a few things with the glue gun. And uh, also, uh, I've been making homemade planter pots. Let me show you. So, we, we eat cottage cheese. Yeah, take the cottage cheese, a stack of cottage cheese containers, and then uh, we use these for pots. And I even have gone so eccentric as to, oh, here they are. Uh, here's some. I spray paint them just to make them more interesting. So I show you what I'm doing with these pots. Put those up there for next time. I just take my drill. and drill holes in them. And now water won't stand in them and you can use them for pots. Fill them with potting soil and plant whatever you want in them. And they're semi-attractive, because I put these things on there too. Um, I can sell plants, yeah. I can sell my vegetable plants because I, I grow too much. And uh, so I can sell them, potted plants, which I did last year. Uh, let me show you what I've planted. Last year, asparagus from seed. Get those to root out, and then we'll plant those in the garden with the other asparagus. Of course, I got radish, spinach, spinach mustards, uh, kale. I've got all kinds of vegetables all throughout this whole shelf on these tubs. I haven't got anything planted in those tubs yet. Uh, I'm going to wait because I've already got, also got a bunch of vegetables planted right here. Mainly salad crops is what I started in here. I'll be move as soon as they sprout and get big enough, I'll put them in the garden. I do have flowers there and flowers up here in these hanging pots to go on the deck. They're starting to sprout already. And of course, this thing is my worm bin. It's a bathtub. I put it on a pedestal. Makes a wonderful work surface for me here. And I keep the, when I come in and water the plants, I also water this, keep it moist for the worms. And then the winter months, I pretty much feed them some corn flour. Yeah, I'll feed them corn flour and a little bit of sand because those little worms need some sand to break things down. I also give them my apple peels, my uh, banana peels. But don't feed your worms citrus. Bad thing. Don't feed them citrus. I cannot find celery seed at all so i figured i'd go to the spice rack and see if i can germinate yeah the seed from the spice rack i also have some coriander we're going to go ahead and uh, try sprouting those and uh, germinating them in the greenhouse because this is the perfect environment for germinating and then transplanting them outside after the last frost as celery seed actually you can start in the ground right now so we'll be planting some out in the ground some in here and see how we go because I like lots of celery. Celery has so many health ben benefits for somebody. You know, uh, some uh, elements in it for fighting uh, certain types of cancers and also fighting cardiovascular disease. It's really great and it's such low cal. I think it burns more calories just digesting it than the calories it has in it. It's a good diet food. And speaking of diet, I've, I'm maintaining my diet and I'm uh, losing more weight. By the way, I got Bigfoot back there. He's standing uh, guard over the greenhouse right now. Uh, he's one of my scarecrows for the garden. And then I've got my hawk kite that flies around the garden. Hopefully it'll keep pests away and uh, I won't have any problems. So let me know down in the comments what you think about my ideas for uh, free pots that you just use from household scrap and then uh, different things I have in the greenhouse. Uh, the garden, gosh, I'm so excited about the garden this year. So excited. Let me take you over here to the side of the house and show you what I've been doing with the wood pile. 
A few, few months ago, I hired a professional log feller because my trees were so close to the road. I had a bunch of dead ponderosa pine. I counted how many we had cut down. There's 14 of them. There's about three more left I need to cut down, but they're far enough away from the road I could do that myself. So I bought this electric log splitter and I just went to town at splitting the logs. Man, cutting them up, uh, there are 16 inch lengths and uh, then just splitting them. And then to this morning I got up after I went and had my special drink of pineapple and uh, celery. Uh, there's a special benefits for that. Anyway, um, did my farm chores, came out here and stacked a whole cord of wood. And uh, looks like I got another cord there to stack. Maybe a cord and a half. But uh, it will be dealing with those and then my chipper shredder over here i rebuilt and uh we're gonna use that so i shred up the bark so i can have some free mulch yeah i've got to check to see how much i have i think it's two two and a half cords maybe um and then i've got an inventory of roofing material up behind the tractor barn i'll just lay the roofing uh, tin over the top of it to keep it dry so it'll season it's about a third of the way seasoned now, so we're going to let it season some more. Let me show you all of my woodworking tools that I got from free from Estate Cleanups right over here. Besides the three or four chainsaws I have, I have a steel gas-powered chainsaw. I just bought an electric Bauer chainsaw. Uh, I have a home light chainsaw, and I have a Poulon chainsaw. Uh, two of which I got from estate cleanup and then the two I bought so uh, Here is the tools. I inherited for log uh, our wood splitting from an estate cleanup Yeah, there's a sledgehammer and an uh, axe head with sledge a Couple of hatchets one with a hammer face on it a nice little bow saw plus another axe with a sheath on it then I got a couple of splitting malls, which are great for the job. And of course, I already mentioned the log splitter and the chipper shredder. So now I'm all set and ready. I don't think I need anything else for handling wood. I've got plenty of resources on my mountain. There's a couple of big trees that I had taken down a couple years ago, one last year. I've got some more to take down this year. So I've got probably 20 cords of wood to resource here on the homestead at least 20 cords there's a lot here so now all i need is a wood stove and that's on our budget this year probably with tax refunds we're going to buy a wood stove and have it professionally installed i also got new fence posts to repair my fence along here and we're going to go ahead and uh, do the chicken yard fence i'll talk to you about that when we get over there i picked this up free from an estate cleanup too it's a really cool clamshell auger post hole digger this thing works fantastic so uh all i have to do is go down and get my cement and set these poles in the ground and we're ready to go there's my other fence posts since i was painting the fence posts i also decided to paint the gate it's when I put it in about 10 years ago, nine years ago, it hasn't had a paint job since. So I just used the extra paint and painted this. This was a leftover paint that I had purchased to paint the door on the tractor barn. I also had to build a new door for the chicken coop. And then since I built the door, I just pulled the paint out because I had a lot of paint in my inventory, both the red and the green. I went ahead and painted these posts green because they were red. I thought maybe go with red. Now I decided we're going with green. And then I painted these uh, T posts uh, with spray paint, uh, hunter green spray paint. And these T posts are going to go right along here to hold the fencing up for the chicken yard. The geese just took off. <laughs> so you notice there's for those of you who have been following my channel for quite some time, you notice something's different right here. Yeah. I spent a month 
clearing out the blackberry bushes. I took little clippers and clipped them off in links and just kept click, clip, 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 clip. And the lopper, I, I got the bigger stalks. I took the torch when the, the weather allowed me to and I burnt everything off, turned it to ash and cinder, cleaned it all up. There'll be some ongoing maintenance in here, but I wanna plant some grasses in here and also put some shrubs in here. I got some hydrangeas. I wanna plant in here and some rhododendrons and then put some pampas grass along there to kind of hold back the uh, erosion and also uh, create a cover for the uh, fowl to be able to go into and seek refuge from hawks. So that's it, just busy maintaining uh, the homestead, doing repairs and uh, just cleaning up, making things nice and taking care of projects that I started. I want to just start finishing all these projects. Plus, it's the season, getting ready for gardening. There's all kinds of stuff going on. So in future episodes, we're going to put in this, repair this fence, but we're going to build the chicken yard fence. I'll put that fence in and finish the fence across the back. And that way the chickens will all be segregated and secure because they can be pests. Uh, especially in my garden when I don't want them in the garden so I've got to lock them down so they don't get into the garden and I also have some deer fencing to put up across to uh, protect the garden very well this year so deer won't get in there and then it's just battling mice and squirrels in the garden I just have to set vigil 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 set vigil with a shotgun and get rid of those beasts also later today I got to go put the nesting boxes in uh, bunny cages because I bred them on Valentine's Day and uh, daylight savings time is the day that I chose from Valentine's Day to uh, daylight savings time is the amount of time you need to count out and then put the nesting boxes in and we'll do that in another episode Stay tuned for those. You could do that by subscribing and clicking that bell icon. That alerts you to new videos. As I do upload them, give us a thumbs up. Click that share button. Sharing my videos on your social media platforms helps us out. Please be safe. Always be kind. We'll see you guys in the next adventure. Bye-bye now.